Hello everyone, tis me, I'm back from working on 15 things. University does that to men. But since I got pretty much all I needed done, I can now make more videos. So, Joker vs Giorno. Let's not pretend for a single second that we weren't shipping in our boots over the rain period being hell. Although it actually wasn't that bad. I actually like this waiting period. Can't say the same for others, but that's their problem, not mine. Let's discuss the matchup. Now, I've heard a fair bit that makes opinions on this matchup a bit split. Some people will tell you that it's the best for both characters, some people will say it's primarily good for Giorno, or some people will tell you that the matchup is not good at all. I'm not someone who really has an opinion on this matchup. This is because I didn't really know a lot about either character. I played a bit of Vanilla Persona 5, but that was years ago, and I'm not really that interested in JoJo's, so it's not something I plan on really getting into. But that didn't stop my excitement from being driven to sky high after how good the sneak peek was. But it did make me worry with how people would take the overall result of the episode, since the debate is very toxic. As of recently though, I think the debate's calmed down, thanks to a more general consensus being revealed as of before the episode dropped. Did the episode change this for the casuals? I hope it did. Please tell me people didn't debunk this episode. That's besides the point of this video though. What are my thoughts on this episode as a whole? Well, this is a really easy question to answer. My rating is a 10 out of 10. Yes, we got a 10 really quick this season. Episode 2s tend to usually get pretty high in seasons, so this isn't really new territory for Death Battle. There's a lot to unpack here, so we gotta quickly run in and see what to discuss, because we have a lot to talk about. The analysis in general has a lot to unpack, because we got some very overpowered characters here to discuss, as well as all of the stories surrounding said characters, especially in Persona. But before all of that, holy shit, Wizard Boosik, I miss my glorious kings, they're finally back! Speaking of them, that Kunwei gag and Joker section was comedy gold. Boosik really ditched his friend to date a teacher. Th that's insane, bro. D dude does not know the true bro code. Not based on Boomstick, if I do say so myself. Very disappointed in him. But yeah, if it wasn't obvious, I found this analysis to be really funny, and I liked a lot of the jokes that the host were out. Giono's analysis had funny jokes too. Mellow with the jokes like Jesus apparently beat the JoJo by the logic of. Uh. Nah. The good joke that Americans totally found funny. Okay, yeah, yeah that joke wasn't. That was pretty shit. Yeah, I'm sorry. And for Gorilla's worst nightmare line. Which pretty much confirms that this was supposed to be the original premiere over Omni Man vs. Bardock. I still don't get how anyone could have guessed that hint, nor could I know why something like this was a premiere when I don't see it as one, because I ain't a writer. I'm a knockhead! I don't make the rules, I can only break them. I'm a fucking image, I used my 2D powers to rob a bank. You think these videos are made for free? However, this is generally a very welcoming sign to the show, as well as how amazing this episode is. But jokes are obviously not what makes a content creator so amazing. Wait, no, that directly contradicts my entire existence. How well edited is the episode? I also think the analysis is also very well edited. Take a shot on how often I say the word edited. I'm a YouTuber, don't be surprised. But that's not my point. Well, the intro cards were decent, but there is one problem. And that is the fact that I saw Joker's card for less than a second at best. How was I meant to see it? Uh, I kind of dislike these new intros. The intro cards are really well animated, but with how little time they're on screen, it's a miracle to make out what the card even has on it. I'm not sure why they went down this alternative, but the original intros gave you the name of the command as well as a brief description of who they are. Doing this with Joker would have been a bit better, because I would have seen his Kong for long enough, but that is only a minor gripe I have with the intro, which overall has no relevance to the overall score of the episode. Imagine the episode getting that out of 10, because, oh, I found the intro to be just a bit goofy. That would unironically be funnier than any joke that I've ever put out. Editing isn't anything new, though. It's generally really interesting to see, and very smooth. Nothing much more new there. It's generally something I expect Death Battle to do well as always. What more can I say? However, what I want the most from an analysis is to hook me onto the counters that the episode is introducing to me. And did this episode do that? Well, I'll begin with Giorno, since he comes from a verse that I don't really look into unless I need to do verse research. 
Wait. I'm the first man. I forgot. I can't read. But I found Jojo's character to be pretty interesting. Even if Jojo as a whole just ain't my thing, I ain't going to deny that I like the general story beats the character goes through. And I do have a bit of interest in the power system of Jojo, mainly because... Well, obvious reasons, it's fucking crazy. Like, Jojo in general. I think that's mainly why people enjoy it so much, which... Yeah, I can see why, but... Yeah, it just isn't really that interesting to me, personally. Joker definitely really interests me, since I do want to play Persona 5 Royal after this episode. Expect a let's play on that in the near future. After fucking Octodad, of all things. How did that win the ball I put in there because it was funny? I find the overall quality of Joker's analysis to be really good. I'm quite excited to get into Persona, since I feel like that's going to be the only way I could understand literally anything. What the fuck is a metaphor and why does my team teacher have access to it? Oh, oh, that makes sense. But now it's time for the fight. Oh wait. Before that... GP Galactus. Alright, let me shut up. Now it's time for the fight. So, let's begin with the fight's opening. Wait, where the fuck did these cats get in here? What were these cats again? Oh, I remember. The cat was an avatar for someone because of them liking your song too much. Ah, yes. Bro, I wanted to bring this joke back for so long. Oh, and the track is a really big bop. So, uh... You know what? Fuck the review. I'm joining the cats. I ain't fine to review an episode. Gonna have nice things in 2024. I'll be back soon, my feline friends. So, I just want to start with the custom sprites, because they are a gift from the worlds above. Judging from the description of this video, these sprites, on their own, were made by Soria Tiff and Zach Watkins, so props to them for the incredibly good sprites that they have created, as well as the animators for this fight who are... Wait, what the fuck is a fizz post? But the animators all did very good at their jobs as well. And I am pretty glad of how everything turned out. This episode did well to capture the overall charm of Persona. Despite how little I know of the general series, I could generally make out things pretty well, since I like to think that I am a pretty quick learner. And we got many notes of Persona, namely the moves names showing up on the top left of the screen, and the fight taking place in the Persona 5 Palace. Which makes sense since, in law, that's how characters in Persona 5 get their powers in the first place. Also, it's the only realistic way that the fight could even take place, since Joker wouldn't have his powers otherwise. Jonah wasn't going to move to a fucking high school, and now was he? TikTok! Jojo's job was there too, granted, given how little I know about Jojo, this isn't coming from me, but there are multiple. I'm not gonna get the language wrong or else Twitter will cancel me, so I'm just gonna call them characters, similar to Jojo's on its own as well as multiple hand-drawn shots looking immaculate on Jono's end. Joker didn't nearly have much to talk about when it came to the hand-drawn elements, so I don't think I can go into any of these shots in detail until we get to the end of the fight. But in general, I really liked how the abilities were showcased, as well as each of the combatants trying to counter the other his abilities. This is primarily why Joker was on the back end for most of the fight. Although Joker definitely had got hit a lot more, excluding the mood is for obvious reasons, it was trying to strategize and counter Golden Experience's life creation, which he does part way through the fight with Jack Frost. I know the fans were raving over the appearance of the pure boy, and honestly, I don't blame them. Giorno also did some neat things to think as well, since Joker used it in one of his personas, making Giorno go, Hey, what the fuck does we go on that one stand? What kind of game show this you got? For a kind of neat callback with Giorno and his stand fending off a bunch of teddy bears similar to how his technical father did against Alucard zombies. Wait, Death Bell featured teddy bears, and the last episode had Danganronpa footage. Oh no, please have mercy. But in general, I think we got a lot of creative uses for the abilities used. Joker's wrist ability of... I'm not pronouncing that. Attacking Giorno as it's an AoE instead of just hurting Giorno like expected is a pretty neat touch and Giorno using gold experience to turn Joker's grappling hook into a snake, 
as well as destroying the gun with the bees, returning to where they were fired from, was really interesting. However, everyone wanted to know how Joker would counter Requiem, the ability that would make or break this matchup in the eyes of a casual. Now see, I'm smart. I didn't need to do that much research into figuring out everything here, but my brain is bigger than... Wait, ain't I just a head? I don't have any other organs. Huh. I didn't really think about that. Golden Experience Requiem comes out and instantly uses Absolute Zero, which, honestly, not a bad way to sell up the finale. And now, let me just stop right here and talk about the voice actors. First off, Kevin Rivera as Joker. This man nearly made multiple people think they actually got Sander to voice the character, me included for a time, which pretty much tells you all you need to know about how well his voice for Joker was. Giordo was voiced by Kieran Regan, who did not have any prior Death Battle experience. You may know him from... I refuse to mention its name, but he is voicing Shikanoin Haizo. Please tell me I pronounced that right. Which is... really good. As much as my opinion on that game is tainted by literally everything else, the voice actors in that game are generally really good regardless. Also, it gave birth to Lisa! No, me! But you can't just shoot an Elise on's joke out of nowhere. That messes up your video's pacing. Wait, when the fuck did I become self-aware? Don't ask questions you are afraid to know the answer to. Anyway. <coughs> oh, why? First of all, Elise Ann's joke. Ta-ta. I don't remember being a bumpus ass hat. I remember being a star. Like a Joe star! The only reason I need to bring up the voice actors now is because of Kieran's moodas. His moodas are insane. Like, honestly, there isn't a better word for it. Just listen to how long this dude went on for. <laughs> now, look, I'm generally a fast speaker. Oh, you all know this by now. I speak really fast in my videos at times, simply because I can't have been doing it since childhood. As proven. But I cannot do a Muda for that long without it coming across as complete gibberish. So, I may diss the game, but I ain't gonna diss the player. Go on there, Kieran. You got some serious brownie points from me. Now, it's time for the death, which I am excited to talk about because it is amazing. I think the actions with my watch party would be fun to pull on YouTube, but I'm holding off on an idea for now. If you want to see Ifujibu reacting to Death Bell, then let me know in the comments and subscribe by you there too, please. I, I, I want to get to 500 before the end of the year. Thanks, Pisonis. But in terms of the death of this episode, the entire watch party, me included, just could not contain the hype. We were all straight smoothing the second it happened. So, let's be explained. Joker gets booted into the death loop. And now we have the Bird Hall of Fame entry for characters getting decked in the face. I'm not complaining. It's funny. Then, we see Joker in the interrogation room. This is a callback to Persona 5's bad endings where Akechi shoots Joker. However, because Joker's social links are able to restore his lost willpower after Absolute Zero took it, Joker breaks out of the death loop, summoning Santa Nile to use Simple Shell, which one shot Shiono in a really brutal death. Not only was the fake out really good, but the death was well animated and also really gruesome. Oh, and also, I guess Joker is lifting death loop on using Simple Shell, so that's cool too. I am very prideful. We also get a neat transition at the end with the Persona 5 result screen. And he gets no EXP from Giorno. Which makes sense given the conclusion. It was exactly like how I expected it to be. I already knew going in Joker would take everything. Because we know Jure isn't that overpowered. Hopefully. I pray some people are decent enough to know. <laughs> Every fucking time. Okay. So! God, I can't have nice things on this goddamn channel. Either way. I believe the conclusion is well explained. It goes into how the almighty power system in Persona, whatever that is, it's like a stats, it, it's like a, it's like a, it's like a typing Pokemon, it's like a, 
It's like a Pokemon type, that's the best you gotta make. Can actually pierce Golden Experience Requiem and also destroy it and join it with the process. The main problem I've seen people have with this conclusion was mentioning Eyes of Heaven Dio, which wasn't canon in mainline JoJo. But my rebuttal is that this wasn't used for some sort of feat. It was used since the mangaka had some sort of, like, writing role with this sort of game, so he knew a lot about Jor, which means we could take inspiration from that game and apply it to, uh, Jordan Experience Requiem. It's not like, oh, it makes a new feat, which is why this is that. No, that is a completely different sentence. It was used to add on to something, which I believe was A-OK -okay in my opinion. There really isn't any more to say about the conclusion because, well, as I said, it just goes over what I expected it to. It goes over why Joker was able to bypass Requiem, and I overall agree with the reasons as to why it bypasses Requiem. And obviously they did a better job in this conclusion than they did with Omni-Man vs. Bardock, but at the same time, we are not opening that can of worms ever again. Now, for the next time. The Defo Crew Lives to be chat! Lives me. But if no good, let's be chat. We got the matchup I like the most off the Kickstarter. Let's go. That means it can only go downhill from here. Mama. Fuck. However, this is going to be an absolute blast. Now, I refuse to enter any debates with this matchup because of really obvious reasons. Mostly because of Mario fans. Hey, I am a Nintendo kid. I can call you Goombas out when I want, okay? I'm gonna photoshop a new Goomba with neural glasses on it. Ugh, bloody hell, my family hates me. Overall though, this matchup is really simple and also is really fun. But before we end the video, it's time for Invertuber's fun fact of... I am never bringing this back. Let's take a look here at how much Yen got after getting his kill with Giorno. 91,385. Now, this seems like something you just pass off as a persona thing. Which, on its own, most people did. But if we add a slash in front of the 9 and the 3, we get 9, 13, 85. Or September 9th, 1985. This is when the original Mario Brothers came out, meaning this foreshadowed the upcoming episode with the inclusion of the release date of one of the combatant series. That's really cool if I do say so myself. I'm now out of cool things to say. Uh. Fuck it, let's go back to listen to the track.